Hi, and thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Natalie, if you're brand new. I decided to make this video because I know a lot of people will definitely relate with it. What I'm gonna go over is my story as far as when I was chasing money for two years and I was completely unfulfilled and very miserable. So I'm gonna break it down as far as how I even got there and I don't really wish upon anyone what I had to go through, but sometimes we learn through trials, we learn through crisis, things will definitely turn around if we choose to, if we choose to be aware, if we choose to really learn from our experiences. And this is my entrepreneurial journey. And I know a lot of entrepreneurs, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, we still live in a culture where it's like money, 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 money. And don't get me wrong, like I completely do value money. I believe money gives you options. I believe it gives you freedom. But at the same time, <laughs> I had to learn how to make money, but also be humble at the same time. And it just didn't really grasp how to be able to do that <laughs> I just thought you had to be greedy all the time you had to just be selfish all the time but how can you be at service for others while still making a whole lot of money how can you like not forget where where we've come from I am so grateful that I went through what I went through even though it was so hard till this day I still get emotional thinking about it but I'm so grateful for what I went through because it made me the woman I am today. At one point in my life, I became so extremely money motivated and that wasn't really good because I was just chasing after money. I was chasing after opportunities that weren't really aligned with who I was. It is important to learn new skills, but at the same time, it's so important to like know who you are and what is your gift. And I believe your gift is something that you like barely have to put an effort in and you're just like walking on water. Whatever that is for you, like I say go after it. What made me even more money motivated was when I start when I got the job working from Grant Cardone. I really am grateful for the fact that I even worked for him because I learned so many amazing skills. It was an unhealthy obsession for me. I became obsessed with making more money and I was bringing in several thousands of dollars every month. I just wanted more. You can make so much dang money, but not make it your everything, not make it your idol. Before I even got hired with Grant Cardone, it was it was tough making money. Like I knew how to get a higher paying job. Like I knew these things, I, I knew how to work hard, but like how do you actually double your income in your job? And that's what I was able to do while working with Grant Cardone. I literally doubled my income and I never saw that in my life. I didn't know I had the capacity, the brain functionality to be able to do that because my family never done that. I've never seen it. Growing up, I've seen my mom work hard, have three jobs providing for her kids, whether she was married or single. So I was taught that money is hard to make. Also, for the longest time, I was under unemployment. Whenever I got a job, I could care less what the benefits were. I just had this mindset of like, I'm just happy making money. I did work for Grant Cardone for over a year and I doubled my income. It was just unfair. Unfa um, unfathomable. Unfathomable. It's a hard word to say. Unfathomable. Unfathomable. Jesus. I just stopped being grateful, even though I was making a lot of money. When you come from somewhere that you didn't have nothing, that step in your life that that happened, it's like you want more of it. At the end of my career there, I was becoming very unfulfilled, very depressed. I literally made that my first priority. I analyzed the income. I was not living out my, I guess, purpose. I just started to take working there for granted. I had a bad attitude in my mind and it was just, I was not teachable anymore. I was not coachable anymore because I literally forgot where I came from. I eventually got fired and it was one of the greatest blessings. But at, the, at that time, I thought the world ended because now I'm like, where is the money gonna come from? I literally made this kind of money. Now I don't have it, what do I do? All of that was built on not a solid foundation, therefore it collapsed, therefore it crashed. I still wanted to make a lot of money. It's emotional to talk about because I was not wise. And the reason why I'm crying is because I was so hurt. I was hurt and I was going jobs that were extremely unfulfilling, but the potential of making a lot of money. And most of them were, were sales jobs. I'm not saying sales is bad, like go for it. If you love sales, oh my God, eat it up. Knock yourself out. Sales is everything, right? How you are ever successful in dating is sales. How you are successful in your relationship currently right now is sales. Everything is sales, but I'm talking about like sales position. You are able to make a lot of money. So I'm like, well, in order for me to make a lot of money, I have to be in sales. So sales was not my gift. 
<laughs> Even though I was making a lot of money, I learned sales, man. I'm so grateful that I did. Knowing me, I was just not gifted in that. And I didn't know that at the time because I was just so focused on chasing money. Like I didn't stop. I got into multiple sales positions, door-to-door -door sales. I did credit repair. I could not relate selling roofs or doors or windows. Uh-uh. I could not relate selling cruises. And I never once been on a cruise. How more hypocrite a person can be. I would quit those jobs. And in my mind, I hate doing that because I'm not a quitter. I kept asking myself why, but that's like later after like I hit depression. Literally for two years, I was chasing money after I got fired from Grand Cardone because it literally dropped that seed in me, but I overdone it and that was my fault. I felt guilty for wanting to do video, wanting to grow a YouTube channel because the mentors that I was hearing, they all became successful through sales. And when I mean sales is like phone calls. Yeah, before I even embarked on any business this venture, I was literally like, I literally graduated from the Art Institute of Atlanta with a video production degree. And I remember I won so many scholarships just to pay off my intuition because that was really expensive. Thankfully today it's all paid off, but that's where I flourished. I was best in show in college and I just had a vision with video. I'm not obsessed. There's a difference. And I want to challenge you. What is your gift? Something that you don't barely put effort in. And I know so wholeheartedly that you can make far more money than what you're doing right now. One day I literally just broke down. <sighs> I became very manipulative and controlling. And the person that just happened to be in my life in that moment, I mean, he still is, was my boyfriend. That was probably one of the hardest things. I wanted attention and I felt lonely. I felt lost and I just became mean. <sighs> There was one night where it was just really, I ended up in a mental hospital. I never thought I could ever end up being in one. You know, I would hear stories and things like that, but I never thought um, I would end up in one. And even though that experience was so scary, I took full responsibility for why I was in there. I knew I created that consequence I could never ever blame anybody for it. The moment I stepped in, or I'm, honestly, the moment I got into a cop car for me to be sent over there, I knew. It was really hard because like you're in a mental hospital and, and people think that you're crazy. I had to mature the heck up. I literally had to find every opportunity to be service to somebody. When I was there and, and I had to speak with someone where whether it was a nurse or a psychiatrist or whatever, I owned why I was there. I know why I'm here. I was manipulative, I was controlling. You know, my boyfriend was scared. Obviously he had to do something and I probably would have done the same thing. So I take full responsibility for the fact that I'm here and it was just liberating, it was freeing. So like the moment you're aware of your own like circumstances and consequences and when you take responsibility, psh, I'm telling you, you can see things so clear, like crystal clear. And every hour I was on the phone with my boyfriend because I was scared and I would just talk to him like literally on the intercom. Natalie, you got a call. Every hour I was on the phone with him because he was also scared. He was, he was really sad. He felt like he did something very wrong. I had to be there for a certain amount of days, but because I was mature and I owned up my, my crap, they let me go sooner because I was literally in a position to honor people and respect others. I wasn't in the victim mentality. I wasn't blaming anybody. I took full responsibility. And so by the time I left the hospital, <laughs> as a joke, I told my boyfriend, don't do that again. <laughs> and then obviously like we all laughed and things like that. So I told him that day, like he was about to break down because I could, I could tell like he was really sad about it. And I told him, I'm like, listen, do not like, please, from the butt of my heart, don't feel guilty for this. I've caused this. I was verbally abusive that night and he just had to create that boundary and I'm so thankful that he did. He chooses to be with me. I can't explain how grateful. Cause like who, who else would have done that, you know? Who else would have stayed? So before I went to the hospital, I had this desire to really go to San Antonio, to really go to Texas 
and start my life again because I was just extremely really sad. He helped me pack up my my stuff and has taken me there because he's so supportive. Like he understands like I need this time for myself. It had nothing to do with him. Like clearly there's something wrong with me. <laughs> I straightened up, I matured up. But the point is like I needed a reset button. I needed a place where I didn't hear noise, no one's approval, nothing, just me. It was just literally a studio. I didn't want to spend so much money on rent for whatever reason, not for my ego, nothing. I just needed a space for myself. And that studio was just absolutely gorgeous. Like it was so beautiful. And a lot of growth happened in those 10 months while I was out there. I was able to think for myself. I was able to go back to what younger Natalie love doing and didn't even think about doing she just did even just like in 13 years old i would be in my room <laughs> making videos whether it was like music videos commercials i don't i just love to create and i knew i wanted to make a lot of money with my innovation i wanted to create while also have my own business and my vision is to have my own talk show my vision is to continue to grow the channel, provide you with value, transformation for your life, and eventually have a talk show of my own, like my own studio, renovate it all out. I really like do value loving your single life before you're getting married. Enjoy and embrace being single. It is honestly the most beautifulest, refreshing, experience of your life you would learn to love yourself and just with god really i had nothing else going on i didn't have a job i literally went to texas i didn't have family there i had friends there but that wasn't my motivation like when i got there i realized i had friends there i just wanted to be alone <laughs> the point is i had a lot of questions to ask myself because there wasn't any distraction it was i created my own environment for me to think and i journaled a lot like i literally during that time i journaled a lot I journaled a lot of my experiences, my thoughts, my revelations. <laughs> it was like therapy for me. I didn't, till this day, I don't have a therapist, but it is important to have one. You know, God is my therapist. And so I just spent a lot of time with God and, and God would like talk to me. He would tell me these questions and I had to get real with myself because I would, okay, I was like, okay, I was chasing money for a very long time, wasn't serving me. How can I still make money? A lot of money than before by doing something that I love. And I was thinking, I was like, hey, what did Natalie you used to love before video okay how can i make money now with that i eventually want to have my own video production company how can i start with what i have now clearly i am so gifted in this that i don't think about it i just do there's no friction <laughs> i've always loved video even just uh, for as long as i can remember as i was learning how to be able to make money with something that i love to do youtube just kept popping up in my mind in november of 2021 i believe when i first posted my first YouTube video. I already had a channel for like over a decade, but like to actually be profitable and make it a business. The whole thing was fulfilling till this day is so fulfilling. Like if you go back to my older videos, you're gonna see my progress where I was before and who I am today. I finally got to pick up a camera and editing software. I literally learned all these things on my own by the age of 13, but I just didn't know how to make it a business. I had to go to business training seminars for me to learn. I had to learn sales. I had to learn how to make money. I had to learn how to talk to people. I had to learn people skills, communication skills. And today I'm literally in so much peace because of that experience in Texas. I took time for me. I don't know what that is for you. I don't know what your heart's desire is for you to do, for you to just block out the noise. But when I was in Texas, I blocked out every noise. I literally had to think for myself, what does Natalie think on a regular basis? Who am I? Fast forward today, like I am around an amazing community called PTYA, which is part-time YouTuber Academy hosted by Ali Abdal. I'm learning how to make my YouTube profitable, you know, learning about online business. It's like very fulfilling to me. And one of the biggest questions that I've asked myself when I was in Texas, Natalie, what would you see yourself doing for the rest of your life that you don't care how long it takes you to make money? I come from a background of making cha-ching. I was like, wow, that's, that's a very good question. Huh, got me thinking. Another very powerful question that I asked, Oh my God, this is so big. I just wanna recap real quick. The first question was, what does Natalie love to do? And what comes natural to her that she barely puts effort in, but she is just like so great at it without even thinking about it? Ask the first question, what is that for you? Second question was, what do you see yourself doing for the rest of your life that you're okay of not making money right away? Now it doesn't have to be the rest of your life, but I mean, we're just for the sake of the question. That question alone will help you narrow it down for you to be very fulfilled. 
don't. And no, you're gonna make far more money than you ever have before. Question number three, man, this one made it uh, super clear. At the time I was building a business, in my mind, like I thought it was the right thing to do to really build that for the next 50 years. But I had to really ask myself, Natalie, do you want that kind of responsibility that your mentor in that business is doing? You know what my response was? Hell no! I already don't like what I'm doing. Yes, I'm helping people, yes, but do I want that kind of responsibility when it grows, when it gets bigger? No! How the heck am I gonna like enjoy it by the time I'm there? If I'm not liking it now, what makes you think I'm gonna love it then? No, 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 no. It was exhausting for me what I was doing. It just took forever. I'm sorry, like the way that I was doing it, apparently, I, I didn't even care. Like I could find ways to make it faster and I did. I came to a realization. What kind of responsibility do I really want by the time I'm there? For me as YouTube, I want the responsibility of having a team, owning a studio, like a talk show. That's a responsibility I want. I don't want what he or she has. It just made it so cl crystal clear. And that's how my YouTube channel was birth. I'm literally loving the process. Ask yourself what it is that you love doing and grow at it and scale at it. Everyone has that. <laughs> the reason why you don't know is because you haven't taken the time for yourself. You're being distracted from all over. I know it's easier said than done because before when I was like super sad, very depressed, I couldn't see that. I couldn't grasp my head around that. How can I be content and satisfied with where I'm at? How? Today, I am so grateful to say that I am extremely satisfied and content, but that does not mean I'm settling. Yes, I want more. Yes, it's coming, but I'm loving this journey. If you can relate with me with whatever part of the story I've mentioned, please share it down in the comments below if you want to. And if you know someone in your life who is struggling just financially or is depressed, <sighs> Do share this video with them. If you really like this video and if you subscribe, it'll let me know to make more relatable videos like this. I have hope for you. I believe in you. Please take everything that I said in a way that benefits you, that it that works for you. Take that time for yourself. Click this video here because you will learn even far more skills to really help you get out of that situation that you're in. Thank you. I love you. And I'll see you next week.